Make no mistake about it, the Nissan Almera is the most promising subcompact sedan we have seen in a while. But promises are one thing. Can this actually deliver? Let's find out. The last time we showed you the Nissan Almera, I was taking you on a tour as to what the vehicle has in the engine bay, uh, inside with the features and the NIM features, all that good stuff. But this time, it's different. We are now going to get into the nitty gritty as to how this vehicle actually performs every day in the city and on the highway. So buckle up and join me because huh, most of this video is me behind the wheel of the all new Almera. It's hard to appreciate the design of the Almera from the inside, but I do have to say that I like the look of this vehicle because it, it's a spitting image of the larger and more high-tech Nissan Leaf, albeit in subcompact sedan form. The marketing departments of car companies, well, they like to use fancy, never-before-heard terms to describe their vehicles. In the case of the Almera, they're using the phrase emotional geometry. I'm not quite sure how that works, but if I base it on high school, I was pretty emotional about my geometry grade. In traffic, what we can really appreciate is the attention to the details uh, with the dashboard. With, in terms of design, Nissan says it's called the gliding wing. Not really sure how that works either, but it does look really good. Compared to the previous generation model, this is a huge leap forward. I mean, the quality, the impression it gives, is very very nice uh, with the leatherette here on the dash it looks really good the plastics also look good but it, it is hard and same thing with the sidings but that's actually quite okay because again compared to the previous one this is a big improvement i still think the honda city has this one beat when it comes to the feel and the look of the plastics but nissan made a good effort to upgrade everything nonetheless Another thing I really like about this Almera is how it suits my EDC pocket dump. Normally in most vehicles, I'll just put my stuff on the passenger seat, but not in this one because there are plenty of compartments here and they're pretty big. Like my, my phone can go into this compartment here along with my wallet, my keys can go in this pocket here. Uh, even my decibel meter has a nice place. Um, and of course, given these times of COVID, you have to have alcohol all the time, so it goes here. And then, if you have a face shield, yes, that silly little face shield, you can put it in the glove compartment because it's really big. Now, if you look at the brochure of the Almera, you'll find a lot of new features. But one thing you won't find there is how they improved the noise control, the noise suppression when you're inside because it is a very quiet experience considering the class. Uh, they use better glass uh, for, for the front, the windshield, better glass here, more insulation on the door, more insulation under the hood. They even increase the gap between the side mirror and the window. So that means uh, there's less wind noise when you're going on the highway. So yeah, you can really appreciate that kind of an upgrade even though it's not in the brochure. This car comes with a one liter, three cylinder turbo engine. Makes 100 horsepower and 116 newton meters of torque. It's been a while since we've seen an engine of this type uh, in the subcompact car class because uh, the last one was the Ford Fiesta. But that one left a bad taste in people's mouths. But it wasn't because of the engine. The engine was good, so far as I know anyway. It was more of the gearbox, the power I mean power shift transmission. It proved to be problematic, unreliable, and it's hard to maintain. Actually, sometimes even defective. But this one does not have a dual clutch gearbox. This one comes with a CVT. And the first generations of CVTs, they were left a lot to be desired. But the new generation ones, they're a lot more reliable and definitely a lot more efficient. This engine definitely has power. And I do like that the torque comes in quite early uh, in the rev range. It even has a sport mode, even though you can't tell it too much because there's a little button at the back of the shifter that kind of changes the way the transmission behaves. So if you like to have a bit of fun in the mountains, this will be very, very enjoyable.
it seems I really picked the worst day to try and go up the mountains and drive the Almera because it's traffic wherever I go. But when I went driving a few days ago, it was really nice. The handling is very much improved compared to the previous one. Now, I'll tell you about the previous one though, and that the handling of that was actually quite good. It may not seem like it, it may look uninspiring, but on the limit when you're kind of balancing the car around the corner, which I did with the Almera, it's actually really nice, really predictable. This one is a step up because they improved the body control, the way the suspension manages the weight around a corner, and the steering has also improved. I do have two gripes with the Almera. The first is the lack of Android Auto, but that's more of a Google uh, issue thing, a timing thing. Not really because Nissan didn't want to include it. It does have Apple CarPlay though. The second issue is the lack of cruise control. Now, some would say that, oi, Filipinas to, we don't need cruise control. But with more and more expressways opening, it's going to be very useful. And it will help prevent speeding tickets if you want to get your 10-year license. There are three things the Almera is actually outstanding at. The first one is, of course, uh, safety. It has a lot of NIM features. Uh, I'm sure you'll read and watch all about that in the future. I don't want to put those safety features to the test. That's not my style. Uh, the second thing is, well, the comfort. It's really comfortable in here for a subcompact car. I think it's head and shoulders above many of its competitors in that regard because the seats are really good, the size, uh, the space is really good, and even these front seats, these are zero G seats, so those really comfortable seats for long drives or long hours in traffic. This one has them uh, like, just like the Navara and the Terra, but maybe a little bit smaller, but they still work very well. The third one, and perhaps the most important, is the fuel economy. Uh, even when I was stuck in traffic all throughout the day, uh, even the last couple of days, the Almera was doing 10.9 kilometers per liter at an average speed of just 17. Traffic, right? So that in itself is a big deal. Even on the highway, I was doing 24.1 kilometers per liter at an average speed of 82. It's absolutely mind-blowing figures, very similar to what you would normally get in a hybrid. Now, there are some caveats though. The first is that I found a big speedometer error, uh, meaning what you're getting, the reading you're getting from the speedo, compared to the actual speed via GPS. So you can find that out if you try checking, let's say, Waze. It just gives you a ballpark figure. But when I was trying out our draggy meter, uh, it was reading around 9.9, sorry, 9% speedometer error, which is pretty big. Normally it's around maybe 5%, 6%, but I've never really seen nine unless you modify the wheel. So it tells me that those numbers are going to be a bit off, uh, meaning there's still a bit of a uh, VAT on them. Once you remove that, it's probably around maybe 22 on the highway, but it's still good. I do think there were some strange decisions made with the Almera, particularly with a few features like the removal of the rear AC, the removal of cruise control, and the fact that this one does not have Android Auto, although I think that's more of a result of Google's uh, timing with the changeover to the new system. But nevertheless, I really do like the Almera platform and what they did with it and how they leveled it up compared to before, but it does come at a premium. This one is 1,098,000 pesos. Yes, quite pricey even versus the Vios GRS and the top spec City RS sedan. But if you want to really drive an Almera with better value for money, well, you can always opt for the VE CVT, which is at 998,000 pesos. That one would be my pick of the entire range. This is Vince of Auto Industria. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.